Right, so uh, once again, good morning. Uh, our next talk, our next speaker today, this morning, uh, is an independent security researcher. Uh, he founded uh, the Pasten CTF group, which some of you might know, I've heard of, and he has previously worked on Open iBoot. Please give a big round of applause to Oan Avraham. Thank you. Can you hear me? Okay, um, so I'm going to talk about uh, how I hacked EMMC chips um, or how I fixed dead Galaxy S3 devices. Um, first, an introduction about myself, who, who am I? Um, I'm Oran Avraham, uh, 25 years old, security researcher based in Israel. Uh, my, I'm currently working uh, at a startup called uh, Medigate. However, this talk has no connection to my employer whatsoever. Um, I previously worked on uh, Open iBoot, which was um, an open source alternative bootloader for Apple iOS devices. Uh, we aimed to boot Linux on um, iPhone 3G, 3GS, and iPhone 4. Uh, we had some success. I also found uh, vulnerabilities in um, um, the, the, the early iPhone um, basebands, which were used to unlock um, SIM free uh, these devices. And I'm also a CTF player with the past 10 team. Um, we're playing tonight, so yeah, good luck to us. Um, this is my uh, contact info. If you, if you want to reach me, uh, you can find it on my website. And uh, there's also my Twitter username. OK, so an outline about this talk. Uh, I'm going to start with uh, an introduction about the story, how I got to hack EMMC devices. Um, then we'll talk about um, Samsung's EMMC patch, which uh, they used for uh, Galaxy S3 devices. And then I will talk about how I obtained such firmware and the, the firmware of uh, these EMMC chips and analyzed it. Um, we'll cover the bug itself that uh, was in Samsung Galaxy S3 devices. And then I'm going to talk about how do we resurrect the devices, like bricked devices. Um, so let's start with the introduction. Um, this phenomenon was called uh, sudden death syndrome. Um, this is what the, the name that they gave it over forums. And it started in uh, 2012. Samsung Galaxy S3 devices um, just started dying with no apparent reason. You, you could use your phone, and then one day um, it will get stuck. And if you try to reboot it, it won't boot anymore. Um, the phone is basically a brick. Um, and if you're lucky, the phone will boot into the bootloader. So you'll see um, a loading screen, but it won't boot Linux or Android. And if you're not lucky, then it's just a brick. Uh, you, can't, you can't use it. You can turn it on. If you plug in uh, a USB cable, you'll see nothing. Um, you can't even charge the battery, because the actual charging um, uh, mechanism isn't powered on. So yeah. Um, and there were a lot of friends in forums. So this is an example. Somebody said, um, this is happening to a lot of people. I hope Samsung do something about this. And actually, they, they did, but it wasn't like a proper fix. And we'll talk about it later. So let's talk about how do you uh, diagnose such uh, devices. So this is a walk in S3. You can see the, the beautiful background, and um, everything is powered on. And this is a dead one. <laughs> yeah, the screen is just black. You can't do, do anything. Um, actually, as I said before, if you're lucky, you'll see this screen, which is uh, drawn by the bootloader, which is called Samsung Guest Boot. Um, and it won't boot. Th th you, this is the last screen you'll see. And uh, if you uh, press a specific combination of keys, you'll get this screen, which is called Download Mode. And we'll talk about it later. Um, so this is my understanding. This is my current understanding uh, on how S3 works. Um, so this is a, a rough schematic. It's uh, there's a lot of different peripherals that um, aren't there, but uh, <laughs> obviously. There's the main CPU, which is called Samsung Exynos. It's an ARM-based CPU. And then you have the EMMC chip, which is uh, a storage device. It's uh, the standard storage device for phones. Uh, and there is some NAND flash inside of it. So it's, uh, it's one package. And if you, if you inspect the silicon, you'll see an NAND flash chip. 
OK, so um, then Samsung dropped the patch. And what happened is that they said to the press that um, they just fixed this, um, this bug. And since the Linux is uh, GPL licensed, they had to publish the source code. So the patch was called um, Soft Patch Moving and VTU 00M EMMC Failure. And it's, um, it's, they, they modified um, the file responsible, the code responsible for communicating with EMMC devices. So in order to understand this patch, uh, we have to talk about what is EMMC. And so what is EMMC basically? So it's, it's the de facto san standard storage for phones. Uh, actually, nowadays, high-end phones are starting to use UFS, which is the bus that replaces um, EMMC. But the, mo the majority of phones still use EMMC. And it's, if you can think about it as SD card in BGA form. So it's, it's a package that you can solder onto a PCB. And it's basically an SD card. It's, uh, it uses the, exactly the same bus. Um, and as you can see, uh, some company called Hard Kernel um, made an, a PCB uh, which have uh, an EMMC chip soldered on, onto it. And you can, they, they made also an adapter which you can plug. And there's no logic to this adapter. It just turns the EMMC into an SD card device. Um, and it works. So. EMMC is essentially an ant flash chip with convenient bus, which is the same bus um, as SD cards. So for this reason, um, some people also call this an internal SD card or something like that. And if I'm going to say card um, later in my talk, um, I'm going to talk about the EMMC chip. So um, when, you, when you communicate with the EMMC bus, um, there you, you send commands uh, to, the, to the card. And there are 64 commands, and I, they are denoted from command 0 up to 63. And for example, you have a command 17, which is read single block, and command 24, which is write blocks. And each command takes a single 32-bit argument. Um, so you send a command, um, it has a number and an argument. And all the commands are categorized into classes. And there's one specific interesting class, which is class 8. Because if you look at the specification, you'll see that uh, command 60 up to 63 are reserved for the manufacturer. So um, if something interesting is going to happen, it will probably happen with these commands. Um, so let's go back to the patch. So Samsung said they, they fixed um, the bug, right? So S3 devices shouldn't um, get bricked anymore. And let's, uh, so th this patch actually, uh, the first thing it does, it, it's com it compares the card's name to VTU00M, which is the hardware revision of the faulty chip. And then they compare um, a number to, to the value F1. And this is actually the firmware version of, the, of this chip. And then they call a function which uh, is called uh, MMC Start Movie Smart, which isn't that interesting, so I'm not going to talk about it. And if all these um, comparisons are true, then it will call MMC start movie operation, which is the main logic responsible for fixing the, the chip. And the thing to, to, know, to note about this patch is that um, it, this code runs every time you boot the device. So every time the EMMC chip is powered on, this code runs. OK, so let's talk about e MMC start movie operation. So this is, um, I edited the code for brevity. It's not the the exact same patch, but this is basically the logic that they use. Um, and this is very interesting. There's one strange thing about this function. Um, there's MMC movie erase command. And erase is, is an MMC command which um, takes two arguments. Uh, it uses two arguments because you precede it with a different command, so you can give it um, two arguments. And the first argument is the start block number to erase, and the second argument is the end block number to erase. And it erases all the blocks in between. So what should happen is that the first um, call to this function should erase all the blocks starting with 4300 up to block number 4A03B510, right? This doesn't make any sense. And then the, the next call is that they like the, the ranges overlap, and 
This was very strange. So my guess was that this is probably not an erase command. Um, it, it, it is probably something else somehow. And the next thing to, to note about this function is that you see the first two calls are MMC movie CMD, and the last two calls are also uh, to the function MMC movie CMD. And MMC movie CMD is basically command 62, which is a class 8 command. So it's reserved for, to the manufacturer. And my guess was that um, the first two calls um, basically enter some secret backdoor mode that Samsung hid inside the EMFC chip. And the last two calls uh, leave this mode. So um, when you're in this mode, erase command doesn't do erase anymore. It does something else. Um, and then I saw that if you inspect the first argument, you'll see that the numbers are consecutive. Um, they increment by four, except for the last number. But um, all, all the all the first, the first uh, five numbers um, are consecutive. And the next thing, so it, it looks something like memory addresses, right? And um, if, you, if you look at the second argument, I, I noticed something uh, very interesting. Um, if I assume that this is uh, memory data, then if you look at it like, uh, as, as little NDN numbers, You'll see 10b5, so it starts with 10b5. And I used to code a lot of ARM assembly. And 10b5 is push in thumb. And thumb is an instruction set um, from the ARM specification. And s functions in thumb start with push, right? Um, so this is an EMMC next to a thumb. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and basically, this is my current understanding of how EMMC works. Um, so you have this all EMMC chip, but there's not only a NAND flash inside of it, there's also a microcontroller. And in Samsung's case, this is an ARM-based microcontroller, which contains some firmware. So I, I thought this patch uh, might modify the, the internal memory of this chip some, somehow. So what I wanted to do is to examine what, what this patch does. So I just took all this uh, data that it writes and uh, put it into a, a binary file which I called patch.bin. And this is, I just used IDA to, to see what, what is going on there. And this is Samsung's patch. Um, so at the bottom, you can see the actual um, thumb instructions. Uh, but if you're not familiar with thumb, you can see also a C-like pseudo code. And what they do is basically they call a function. And if it returns 0, the chip will go in, into an infinite loop. Um, and this is interesting because later on, I understood that um, what was there before this patch, it, just, it, it was just a call to this function. And there wasn't this check. So they took a single call to a function and turned it into a call to the same function. But if it returned 0, just, they just go into an infinite loop. So my thought was, this can't fix anything, right? <laughs> because the chip is either going to do the same thing as before, or it's going to go into an infinite loop. Um, and then I read some threads over forms, and I saw this thread, Ultimate Galaxy S3 Unusual Freezing Thread. <laughs> um, and this is a quote from the actual thread. You can see that Galaxy S3 is freezing with lockup screen not responding, ending up with unusual rebooting and boot looping, and angry S3 users reporting this problem, and it keeps freezing every five minutes or 50 plus freezes a day. This is insane, right? This phone is not usable. Um, I can't use it as my phone if it if it's freezes every five minutes. And I had an S3 back then, and I, noted, I started yeah, um, observing freezes um, in my phone as well. So the next step that I wanted to do is to obtain the EMM EMMC firmware in order to understand how it works. So how do you get a firmware? The first way to do it is to write. So I can, I can write the EMMC's memory, right? So I can just write code to random locations, and hopefully it will get run some, somehow. Um, and then just write things to different addresses and do lucky guesses, and maybe um, I will see something on the EMMC bus and then try to, gr to obtain the firmware. But this is like um, a shot in the dark. So the next uh, thing I thought about doing uh, is to fuzz different commands, like use uh, command 60, 61, different class 8 commands. 
Um, but I didn't want to destroy my own EMMC, <laughs> uh, which was still working. So the, l the last thing I thought about doing is to look for clues. So how do you look for clues? I just Googled this, um, these numbers that Samsung used to enter this uh, backdoor mode. And I saw a different patch. So this is a patch from a different device. And it, it's called a patch the firmware of certain Samsung EMMC parts to fix a bug. Uh, <laughs> And it uses the same, the same mode as before. So notice that they, they use arguments EFAC 62 EC. And then it's 10, 21, and four zeros. And this is um, important. So they use 10, 21, four zeros, right? And then they write um, the value FF to the address for the D9C. But then there was something else afterwards. Um, so if you continue to read this patch, you'll see this thing. This, this is a snippet um, which isn't closed by ifdef, uh, which is called test MMC firmware patching. And they use the same EFAC 62EC as before, but now they use the, the argument 10210002. Um, and the next thing is that they, they use an erase command with the same address as before, but then they, they, um, they do a read command Right, and um, I was wondering, hmm, this might be Samsung's way of reading the memory address of the, the memory of the EMMC chip, um, because they use an erase command with the same address as before. The second argument is four, which looks like an, like a size, and then they read um, a D word from from the EMMC. Uh, so I took this snippet of code and modified into modified it into this snippet of code, uh, which basically just loops over all the addresses uh, in the address space. I, I just guessed um, how big the address space is. And I just read a, a single D-word every time and dumped it into a file. Um, and then I got this thing, um, which looks like a firmware, right? Um, so um, the names aren't... The names that you see, like our, um, NMI and Hardfault, um, I, these are my names. Um, what, what I saw was addresses, but this looks like um, a thumb vector table. So uh, I understood that I basically got the firmware um, of my own chip. So the next step was to reverse the firmware in order to analyze what the bug is. So luckily for me, the firmware contains strings, so I, I can use them as part of my reversing process, but actually it contained a string, <laughs> uh, a single string, and it was this string, uh, which isn't very useful if you're um, trying to reverse a firmware. Um, and as you can see, this is a snippet of um, my reversing process. I used a lot of like names, um, flip bit in somewhere, and um, memory mapped I.O., 1,000 2D words, or... Um, but I, I basically understood the, the high-level logic of this code. And I, I got to the point which I can, in which I can understand most of the firmware. So let's talk about the bug. Um, before we talk about the bug, we have to talk about how, what, is, what is EMMC exactly. Um, so let's talk about normal storage first. This is like a hard drives. Um, you have two operations that, which you can do. You have um, a read operation, which reads data from the device, and then you have a write operation, which writes data into the onto the device, right? This is uh, pretty normal. Then you have uh, non-flash storage. So if you have a non-flash storage, you can um, do a read operation, which still reads data, and this is um, as before. But write operation actually turns off bits. Uh, it if a bit was already zero, it won't turn it into a one. Um, so this is basically applying a mask to bits on, um, on the storage. And then you have an erase command, so you have to, you gotta have some, some way of uh, reversing this process. Um, an erase operation erases a whole erase block. It um, turns it, all the bits in this block into, into one, into ones. But um, it is a slow operation. And there's another problem. Um, erase blocks have a limited program erase cycle. So if you issue something like a thousand or maybe a ten thousand or hundred thousand erases, the block will eventually die. 
and then it's not usable anymore. Um, so something have to, some software have to do this translation, right? To um, take this um, awkward storage and sh um, do an abstraction, which will show it uh, like normal storage. So this is called an FTL or flash translation layer. And this is common. And the FTL is responsible for um, many things. But some examples are, are well leveling, which is spreading out erases among different blocks. So no single block gets erased um, a lot of times. And then it also does bad block management. If block already died, then it will remap it internally to, to a different block. It actually have um, spare blocks. And then um, it, the firmware in Samsung's case is also responsible for the EMMC bus communication, or some of it. Um, so what is the bug exactly? So when you do write operations on the device, um, the FTL has to save some metadata for itself um, because it has to keep track on wi how many times this block was erased and um, what is the internal mapping as, and so on. So it has some metadata that it saves for itself. Um, and when you do write, operation, write operations, it has to modify this metadata. And the actual bug was a miscalculation in this um, code, which not always, but sometimes um, made the data corrupt. And once it happened, it should only happen once. If the data got corrupted, um, this is before Samsung's patch, um, every time you try to power on the EMMC chip, um, the FTL will try to pass this data, and it's corrupt, so it will raise a CPU exception. Uh, and the default exception handl handler, in Samsung's case, is just an infinite loop. Um, so the device, so the dev you use it, the device, and one day the metadata get, gets corrupted, and then you try to turn it on, and um, it tries to pass the metadata, and it's, it's corrupt, so it throws an exception. And then the EMMC goes into an infinite loop, and you can't access it anymore. Um, and the EMMC is basically essentially dead because you you send commands into it and nothing responds because the firmware is the one is the the software that, that is responsible for answering EMMC commands. So Samsung's patch was something about this, um, something like this. Right before the metadata is about to get corrupted, halt the CPU. So there's no bug, right? <laughs> um, Right before the bug is about to happen, just hold the CPU. Um, so it never happens. Um, and this turned like sudden death syndrome into sudden freeze syndrome. So I wanted to fix my own device. Um, so a quick recap, we got, I got the EMMC firmware by analyzing Samsung's patch. Um, the firmware ha had a bug causing FTL corruption. Once it happened, uh, the chip won't boot anymore, and Samsung's patch was to avoid the bug happening at all. Um, so the next step is obviously to resurrect dead phones, right? Um, yeah, what? <laughs> how, how do I? Um, so the EMMC gets into a loop at boot. Um, but what happens before it gets into this loop? So I took a look at the firmware, and I saw um, this memory layout. As you can see, at address 0, there's something that I called a boot ROM. And it's, it's a ROM. You can't write into it. I, um, and it, it is a code. And what it does, it initializes the EMMC hardware, and it loads the firmware from the NAND flash chip itself. Um, and this is strange, because if the boot room is already there, why, don't, why, why doesn't it already doing the, the, the things that the firmware is responsible to do? So my guess was that the firmware was too too big to reside wherever the boot ROM resides. So they had to like bootstrap it um, from the external NAND flash. And then it also has its own machinery for EMMC commands, which is strange, because all it has to do is just load the firmware, right? So my guess is that during the production process, uh, the NAND flash is empty, and there's no firmware. And then when Samsung produces this, uh, these chips, they plug them in, and there's no firmware. So the boot ROM goes into some kind of recovery mode, um, and it, ex it exposes an EMMC bus. And from there, you can write your new firmware. 
And the boot room is basically a stripped down firmware. There's no FTL, but um, it looks like the, the firmware itself. And this is my, underst my current understanding about how S3 works. So inside the EMMC, you have um, two silicon dies. Um, the first is an ARM chip, which has a boot ROM, which loads the firmware from the external NAND flash and then boots it. Um, so if we could ever talk to the boot ROM, this might be interesting because we could maybe so do something interesting. Um, but the firmware loading actually succeeds because, because the firmware is still intact. Um, the boot ROM will try to load the firmware. The firmware is still there and it will jump into it and the firmware executes and goes into an infinite loop. So there's no chance of ever talk to, talking to the boot ROM, right? Though actually not. Uh, this is not correct because on boot and there's this function at address 7dbc and a timer is being set for 35 milliseconds. And if during this p time period, some interrupt fires, it, this is interrupt number seven, I don't know what it is yet. Um, they read a value from a memory mapped IO uh, address and they compare it to this constant magic. Um, and if this compar comparison is true, firmware loading is skipped and it goes right into this recovery mode. Um, and my guess is that, so th this is a schematic of the boot process and the, right, the, the left column is the normal boot process. And if we ever get to the right column, that we'll, we will get into this recovery mode. So my guess is that this interrupt number seven corresponds to some EMMC command. Um, and this value that they read from memory mapped IO is probably the EMMC argument because it's 32 bits. Um, so dead EMMCs get stuck on boot. So this is if the chip is already dead. Um, however, right before it gets stuck, there's a time window. And during this time window, if you somehow trigger this interrupt, um, the boot process um, is aborted and it goes right into EMMC boot from recovery mode, which is interesting. But the phone is already dead. How do I even talk to the EMMC chip? Um, so I could have used the hardware mode, like um, desolder the EMMC and send commands externally, but eh, I, I wanted to like, do something with software um, because I, I don't know how to desolder the GI chips. <laughs> Uh, so the next step is to talk to the EMMC by some kind of magic, uh, and then we'll access the EMMC boot ROM, uh, and then we can repair it from this boot ROM recovery mode. Um, so I said, that if you're lucky, you'll get this screen. So this is the phone's bootloader. This is S boot, and it, it is saved on the EMMC chip itself. So how, how do you get this? If the EMMC chip doesn't respond, how the, phone, how the main CPU gets to execute this bootloader. Um, so apparently, if you read Samsung's specification, you'll see that the, their EMMC has two partitions. And it's, it's not a partition in the file system sense. It's in, uh, a partition in the EMMC sense. Uh, and there's a boot partition and a user partition. And the boot partition holds um, S-boot in Samsung's case, uh, which is the bootloader for the, the main CPU, and the user partition holds everything else. So it, it, it stores um, Linux and um, all the Android um, file system and all the apps, and etc. So the boot partition has its own FTL metadata, and the user partition also has its own metadata. Uh, a friend of mine had a bricked S3, which does load S-boot, so he gets this screen. And I s what, what I understood that happened is that only the, users, the user partition met metadata got corrupted. So the boot partition is still intact. And I suspect this is a common scenario because when you write to your device, you usually don't write to the boot partition, you write to the user partition. So if something is about to get corrupted, it probably will be in the user partition. Uh, so this is how S3 breaks. Um, the main CPU will power on, it, try, it will try to access the EMMC and ask, give me S boot, and the EMMC parses um, the boot partition, um, and it will um, return S boot to the main CPU, and then S boot will try to access the user partition in order to load Linux, and then the EMMC tries to parse the user partition metadata, and it's corrupt, so it goes into a loop. 
Um, so SBoot actually has a device firmware upgrade mode that is called download mode. And there's a protocol over USB. The phone side is called Loki, and the computer side is called Odin. I guess this is a reference to the Norse mythology. Um, and there's no way of sending low-level EMMC commands. So if you ever saw this screen, this is um, Odin software. It's a software made by Samsung um, to talk with this protocol. And in this protocol, you can't send like, raw EMMC commands to the EMMC chip. So I need to send um, commands to the chip, but the code isn't there in SBoot. So obviously, the thing that I have to do is to exploit SBoot, right? <laughs> and run my own, my own code. Uh, so this is, this is taken from um, USB PIT packets handler from SBoot. Um, this is a, a C pseudo code that I wrote. So you control this variable um, is dump. And it, if it's one, um, it will read something from the USB packet that you sent to it. And then it will give you an, a buffer. Um, and it will use this um, number that you gave it um, as an offset to this buffer. But it doesn't do any boundary checks at all. Um, so. This is our, our uh, out-of-bounds read vulnerability, right? And then the second case uh, reads uh, a size from the USB packet, and then it reads it into this buffer, which is constantly allocated on the heap. It's, uh, it's of size uh, 2,000. Um, but it doesn't do any boundary checks at all either. So this is um, a heap overflow vulnerability, right? Um, so eventually, I found that this is not actually a zero day. Um, if you take like an S8 or S7, um, this two vulnerabilities are fixed, but um, for S3, which is end of life, um, these vulnerabilities are still there. So if you have an S3, you can use it. Um, so let's talk about uh, Samsung, the SBoot heap implementation. Um, so if you wanted to allocate some size, um, and the heap chose to, uh, to use a chunk which is larger than the, than the size that you wanted to allocate, uh, it will split it from the end. And we'll see an illustration in a moment. And the, the thing to note about this heap implementation is that there's no security mitigations at all. Um, it's very basic. Um, so let's say that you wanted to allocate 50 bytes. And um, the chunk that it chose was 100 bytes. Then it will give you this part, which is the bottom um, part of the buffer. And the buffer, the, the chunk header, has um, a size number, uh, a size um, parameter, and it will use this size to go to the end. So I wanted to achieve write what were in order to exploit SBoot. And I, I, used, I exploited this chunk splitting technique. So the first thing to do was to fake a chunk header, which I can control uh, with some large size, so it will get split. And then I had to figure out its address. And I can do this with the first vulnerability, um, the relative read. And then um, the next step is to make sure this chunk is actually selected when you call malloc. Um, and then it will try to give you the bottom part of the buffer. So it will start from the chunk address. Um, and then it will go all the way to the bottom, which is adding chunk size. And then it will go back the size you wanted to allocate. Right? And we want to control this number, and we can control this number. So if I just um, turn around this equation, um, if I want to control address, I can just use this number as uh, the chunk size, and then it will give me this address. Um, so the actual details, in my opinion, are boring. So you can find the exploit under this repository. Um, it's public, so you can just take an S3 and use it. Um, and this is a demo. Um, this is download mode. And this is hello world as, as boot exploit, right? So it works. Um, OK, so what if it's really dead? What if this happened, right? It, what if also the boot partition is gone? So obviously, something has to load, has to talk with the EMMC and load as boot, right? So there's also another piece of code, which is called Exynos Bootroom. And it, 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 is, it resides in the, in the main CPU. Um, and what happens normally is that the Exynos boot ROM starts, and then it loads something which I call the first bootloader, which is prepended to SBoot, and is signed, 
and it just verifies the signature of sboot and then um, jumps into it. So just you can just think about it like um, it's together with with sboot, and then sboot um, loads the kernel. But um, the boot ROM has to load the first bootloader and some and sboot from somewhere. So what does it try to do? So it first starts with the emmc, but if this fails, it goes to the external SD card. Um, so I just took sboot and the first bootloader and dropped them onto an SD card, but this that didn't work because um, sboot boots into, in this case, sboot boots into SD card mode in which there's no USB protocol, so you can't exploit it. And as I said, it, it is signed, so I can't patch it. But apparently some people um, over um, a forum, uh, the, the nicknames are Adam Outler, Rebellos, and Ralkdev, they found out that there's a development board called Odroid X, which uses exactly the same CPU, so it's the same boot ROM, which uses the same signature, but it uses a different first bootloader, which doesn't do any signature checks at all. So if you, to, if you take this first bootloader and append, it, um, append to it a patch test boot, it will jump into this patch test boot. And then you can just exploit it and run your code. Um, and this is the modified boot process. So you start with Exynos boot ROM, you plug in an external SD card. The external SD card has um, Odroid X first bootloader, which is signed, so the boot ROM will jump into it. And then um, the first bootloader will um, jump to the patch test boot. And then you can exploit it and run your shellcode. And no hardware mode is requi required at all. Um, so if the boot partition is still intact, the phone loads as boot, um, and it's stored on your EMMC. But if it is corrupt, the phone uses the external SD card. And either way, I can load as boot, and then I can exploit a vulnerability to gain a code execution on as boot. And the next uh, step is to access the EMMC boot ROM. And as I said before, I I, I need to trigger this interrupt number seven and send it send um, this argument somehow. Um, so I just iterated over all the possible EMMC commands, which is from 0 to 63. And I powered off the EMMC, powered it back on, so the boot process um, gets um, started again. And then I quickly sent uh, command X with this argument. And I waited some time for the boot process to, to finish. Um, and then I sent any command which is supported by the boot ROM recovery mode, and I s checked if I got any response. And I said, ah, this is, uh, pr maybe it's going to work, maybe not. And then I tried command zero, and it failed. And I said, ah, it's never going to work, and then command one worked. <laughs> uh, so this was very exciting for me, because this is the first time the EMC actually responds. And up until then, on, my, on the brick device, I tried to um, send several commands to the EMMC, and I never saw a, a response. And this is the first time I actually saw a, a response back from the EMMC. This was ve very exciting. And the EMMC bootroom even has command 62 in all this um, backdoor mode, so let's fix it, right? Uh, let's repair the EMMC. Um, so there are two revisions of this faulty chip. The first revision uses uh, firmware F1, which is buggy. Um, and then there were phones with firmware revision F7, in which the bug never occurred. So probably Samsung fixed the bugs, fixed the bug in later hardware revisions. So my goal was to update the chip to firmware F7 and format the FTL metadata so um, the corruption is gone. Uh, OK, so what I did was to write a dump tool, a firmware dump tool, um, which is a kernel module. And then I had to convince anybody over the internet to run my code, which sends low-level EMMC commands to, on their own device. <laughs> and thanks to Artesia, which was um, courage enough to uh, try it, I got uh, a dump of firmware F7, and it worked. And I just had to write it to the um, uh, EMMC itself. Um, so this is absolutely doable, because I could have used the memory write backdoor to write my own code and access the NAND flash chip um, and write a new firmware. But then I found out something simpler. Um, so there's another backdoor, which is command 60. Um, and it has two firmware upgrade modes, for some reason. Um, so the, the former mode, which is CBAD1160, 
um, supports FTL metadata format. You can send an erase command and it will format all the FTL met metadata. And then you can um, write a new firmware and it will do everything for you. So um, how do I fix a dead S3? Just, I just, just get the dead S3, uh, which should be, this is important to note that there are many, th th there's different revisions of Galaxy S3. I'm talking about a GTI 9300, which is the international version. Um, boot to S boot, either directly, um, if the boot partition is still intact, or by using an external SD card. Um, then exploit S boot to run your own code. Um, from the shell code, reboot the EMMC into boot from recovery mode. And then use command 60 to format the FTL metadata and flash the new firmware. F7 firmware, then reboot the MMC so the firmware loading actually, s so the firmware boots, and then you can write sboot to the MMC's boot partition. And there's another step, which is to profit, <laughs> uh, and this means it's demo time. Um, so I pray to the demo gods that it, it's going to happen, it's going to succeed. Um, so, yeah. This. Okay. Um, so I have a brick device. I bricked it on purpose. Um, this is the device. Um, if I try to turn it on, there's, there's a battery inside. Uh, nothing happens. It's bricked. Um, if I try to get into download mode, nothing, nothing works. Um, and I have this external SD card, uh, which, is, uh, which does have um, S-boot, as I said before. If I plug it in, and I try to uh, boot device, it should boot into. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, so it boots into something, and now I can use. Um, let me just go back to the. Yeah. And I can I can plug it into the. USB um, and S boot answers. Um, and now I'm going to um, run a shell code which fixes the EMMC. Um, yeah, it's retrying, it's okay. <laughs> yeah, shell code started. It's rebooted the EMMC into boot row mode, and now it will write the new firmware. And it should take a couple of seconds, so hold tight, as it said. <laughs> Okay, um, yeah, so the next thing it's, it's going to do is to reboot into the firmware and then um, change the boot partition size. So there's actually a boot partition. Yeah, and now sh the shell code is done. And I can just um, use a different SD card, which um, loads S boot normally, and it goes into SD card mode. And in this SD card mode, um, it will write S boot to the boot partition. So let me just yeah okay. So this is SD card mode. Um, I think you can't see, but if I now remove this SD card, right, um, and just reboot the device. So um, this is the battery is outside, and now it's yeah. <laughs> um, it should boot into. Yeah, so this is S-boot, so the device is fixed. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so, um, conclusion, um, a, a, a few shout outs. Uh, so, Rebellos, Adam Outler, and Radek Dev uh, did all the um, Exynos U boot, first bootloader, Oldroid X uh, work. So, um, thanks to them, I, I couldn't, I, if it weren't for them, I couldn't um, boot brick devices. Um, Entropy 512 was involved in the EMMC research back in 2013. Um, and Bunny and Xobs held a wonderful talk here at CCC um, some years ago. Um, 
and they talked about um, hacking Chinese SD cards, and they mentioned my research, and this motivated me to complete it because it was still in progress. So um, this, was, this is the reason which, uh, for which I'm talking today. So thanks. Uh, <laughs> So I can basically own uh, Samsung EMFCs. I can fix bricked S3 with just software. Um, and in my opinion, this is just a use case, because now you can do interesting uh, stuff with your uh, EMFC chip. Um, and what I think we should do next is to look at newer EMFCs, uh, which I suspect still has this backdoor, because I, I tried some, some chip which I could get my hands on. and it had this back door, so um, uh, maybe even the new ones also has this uh, mode. And then there's uh, UFS, which is the bus which uh, replaces EMMC, and it is based on SCSI. Um, and Samsung also produces UFS chips, so it might be wondering to see if there's um, a similar back door. Um, and it's also interesting to look at different vendors of EMMCs, and maybe one day write an open source alternative firmware for these devices. Um, so this is question time. Uh, you can find the code that I wrote to experiment with these devices over the following links, and you can find the slides in the bottom link. Um, it's already public, so go ahead. And if you have any questions, this is the time. So thanks. <laughs> So thank you very much, Olan, for a really interesting talk. If you have questions, there are two microphones in this aisle, and then two on the sides. And first question from microphone number, number two. two. Yeah. yeah, hi. OK, really amazing what you did. Uh, did you have any feedback or contact with Samsung about this? Yeah, so um, I published my research um, back in uh, 2012, 2013, sorry, um, over forums. And I, I didn't uh, use it. From a security perspective, I wanted to fix um, S3. Uh, they never um, responded or um, they, they didn't um, contact me in any way. Um, I didn't contact them about the bootstrap um, recovery mode because, in my opinion, it's it's not a security issue um, and it can be fixed. It can be fixed. Um, and regarding the, the S boot vulnerabilities, um, there's no, it's already, it's already patched. So, um, no, the answer is no. So, the way I understand this, this is the only way to actually fix some of the phones that are broken out there, right? Yeah, no um, I, I don't know any other way to do it. Okay, so, yeah. thanks. Microphone number one. After seeing a real life FTL, do you still use SSDs? Sorry? <laughs> After seeing the code of a real life FTL, do you still <laughs> use SSDs or other flash devices? Yeah, this is a good, uh, good question. Um, it's OK. <laughs> and I, I don't, there's no alternative, right? So, uh, but we might make something, so yeah. Number three. Do you, have an <coughs> Do you have any idea what other devices have this model EMMC and W and like support the same um, commands that let you access the firmware? Because uh, there's other devices that have had bad MMC. Oh, OK. Yeah, sorts. so the, um, some, uh, Galaxy S2 had a similar bug and Kindle Fire, I think, one of their versions. And some of them got uh, patches by Samsung. And it usually was something like this, like patch the internal memory every time the device boots. So the bug um, mm -hmm. never happens. I think in the other um, devices, the bug was actually fixed. But um, so are you aware of any non-Samsung devices that have Samsung MMCs in them that might be the same MMC? Uh, I'm sorry? Uh, are there other devices that aren't Samsung phones oh, yeah, that would yeah. still have Samsung parts in them? Yeah, so th there's not a lot of EMMC manufacturers, and Samsung is a big manufacturer, so mm -hmm. uh, a lot of different phones and devices use Samsung EMMCs. So yes, this is relevant to non-Samsung devices. Number one. Hi, thanks for your amazing talk and research. Um, uh, two questions. Um, 
There's the Samsung Galaxy Note 2 that has um, more or less the same bug. Um, does your fix and your research ah. also apply to uh, that device? And um, is there a way to do a chip off dump um, without uh, erasing the FTL and uh, contents of the card? Yeah, so th this is a, a good question. So the, fir the first question was um, Does S2 has the same bug, right? The, the Note 2. Oh, the um, Note the 2. Oh, I, I don't know. Um, I never had a Note 2. So. Okay, I have one that is bricked that way. Okay, <laughs> uh, might be interesting to try. Yeah, um, sure, let's talk. And um, regarding the second question, so my code actually formats all the FTL met metadata, which is um, not that good because it erases all this information about how many times um, every block was erased. Um, a more uh, proper fix would be to actually fix the, the corrupted metadata, but I haven't got to the point in which I can fully understand the inner workings of the FTL. So um, this is my current code, but you're um, welcome to try to improve it. Wonderful. Yeah. Microphone number two. Uh, I'd like to know what the time frame was from you starting to work on the issue till you had the first fixed S3. Yeah, so I, I obtained the firmware back in 2013, uh, and I had a working device, and I didn't want to do like um, bad stuff to it, so um, I, I stopped um, back in this year, and then um, last year, uh, a friend of mine said that he has a brick test tree, so I said, hmm, let's try to fix it. So. I think if you um, like um, accumulate the, the time, it's probably going to be like um, the time frame which I worked, which I um, actively worked on this, was something like um, a few months, probably four or five months. But it started back in like four, four, four years ago, and um, and I finished it something like a um, couple of months ago. So, cool. yeah. Thanks. Number one. Do my um, do. Samsung SD cards have the same undocumented commands. Yeah, um, I suspect they do, some of them. Um, I actually bought some Samsung SD cards, and they had um, controllers made by Silicon Motion. But I read over the internet that some specific cards, I think it's um, Evo Plus, Evo Plus um, have Samsung uh, controllers, which should have the same vector. So I'm trying to. Um, buy one, um, but as, as, as soon as I find out, I will probably post about it. Thank you. Number three. Hi. Uh, thanks for the great talk. Um, so I'm still using an S3 as my everyday phone. <laughs> so what okay. actually happened a few months ago is they broke down. But uh, so I still saw the Samsung bootloader, the S boot, what he described, and afterwards it got stuck at the boot screen from the OS. So in my case, it was Cyanogen mode, but also when I flashed on something else, Linux OS or the default Samsung firmware, it still got stuck. So I really had to reflash everything, and then it worked again. That somehow sounds really similar to the bug you described, but in a way, it also it doesn't. So, yeah. do you think it's the same thing? So, uh, if it's related, my guess would be that um, your device have this um, in-memory patch, which freezes the EMMC. And when you used uh, Lineage OS, or so what it was before, um, this infinite loop triggered um, at some point in the boot process, so the device actually froze before it got to the to, to boot Android. Um, but then, when you refreshed it, somehow the internal block mapping got changed, and now it doesn't trigger this um, freezing. But um, if your chip is a VTU 0 M and its firmware is F1, then you definitely have the bug. <laughs> okay, um, thanks. Yeah. <laughs> Number one. Hi, thanks for the great work. Uh, one question, you said you upgraded the firmware of the EMMC with a new revision. Are these firmwares actually signed, or can you flash anything on the EMMC controller? You, you can flash anything, uh, yeah. They, okay, they have a, a simple heuristic which checks if the stack address is, um, it, it looks normal, but other than that, it just boots every firmware you, you give it, so. 
I think, I think in your newer EMMCs, which is uh, EMMC 5.1, there's a mechanism of um, uh, flashing new firmwares, and I think it should be signed, but I don't have an, uh, a newer EMMC, so uh, I don't know about, but about it, but yeah. Thank you. So I have one last question yeah. um, about the Samsung patch. Uh, you said that it basically goes into some sort of infinite loop, but do you think they might have tried to, to do some busy wait, or are they waiting for something to happen? No, I, I think they just, um, they, they just want, uh, they want the bug to never happen. So, uh, yes, I, my phone froze <laughs> a lot of times, and I waited like, um, I don't know, 30 minutes, and the code in the Linux kernel doesn't do anything, and the code in the EMMC uh, firmware doesn't do anything, so my guess is just waits forever. <laughs> and, yeah. So I see no questions. So again, big round of applause to Olan for great work. Thank you. Thank you.